Hello and welcome to the Planet Zoo Every Animal Franchise Zoo. Indeed, it has been a little while since I've done anything new with this zoo, but since the last episode in 2023, there has been a few new DLCs dropped, so there's more animals to add, since I do want to maintain this zoo's status as a truly every animal franchise zoo. So it's back into the thick of it, and today I'm starting off with some additions from the Oceania DLC pack. So here we are, my old friend, the Every Animal Franchise Zoo. It is a little strange. I think it's at least six months since I was last in here and there's going to be some struggles with this. We are going to run out of money at some point because it's not earning enough money as profit. So we've got 13 million left in the bank, but that is not going to last. I just hope, fingers crossed, it lasts until we can get all of the DLC animals in. Hey ho, that's a future problem. Where we left off last time, we just got through to this area here, so putting in the West African lions. And I feel like I'd managed to get the zoo to look quite balanced. It doesn't look odd there being any areas that are uncovered or anything. It's all pretty balanced across the zoo. Now we've got 13, I think, more animals to go in with two DLC packs that I hadn't covered. So trying to figure out where these are going to go. I think the only option that I've got here is to simply carry on with this area that I'd started with the lions here. So maybe working in this corner and taking the zoo right up to the boundary line at the end here. That's the plan anyway. So shall we take a look at what the first brand new animal will be going into the zoo? It's the little penguins. Good animal to work with this one. It's a small animal, so relatively easy to build for them. No interspecies enrichment, so don't need to worry about that. Region is Australian coast, so there is going to be a water need to fulfill. And six to 500 penguins in an enclosure. So yes, we will definitely be going with just the six here. Less than 200 meters space requirements, plus the water needs, obviously. Still an easy build for easing ourselves back into this. Little penguins is a nice small build. They're not a very demanding species and they are a confident animal, so no need to have any issues with the fencing and the barriers. For the water section, I decided to make an underwater viewing area. So that involved a bit of fiddling to get the pathway to work. There was a slight issue with this at the start. The main pathway that wraps around the lion enclosure, there was an issue with this and I couldn't get any other paths to come off that. It was just saying that the terrain wasn't modifiable. And normally when you get that issue, it's something to do with there's a little bump in the terrain next to it. So I flattened everything out and it still wouldn't work. So I had to delete the entire path around this side of the lion enclosure for some reason and then replot all of that. So first headache, had to redo all the pathways before I could even start on this habitat. So that was fun. Next challenge, I guess, is just getting used to building in Planet Zoo again. It's been a really long time since I did habitat developments in Planet Zoo. In some ways, it's not so bad. So for me, it's like riding a bike. You don't forget the controls and such in Planet Zoo. More of a challenge is remembering the staple pieces that I use. So things like the construction blocks and stuff, just remembering which pieces I normally use for certain effects and things like the typical wood pieces I use and stuff like that. Good thing is though, the Every Animal Zoo is so big now. If I need something that I think, oh, I knew I used Use that in one of the other builds. I just have to fly over to that part of the zoo, check what piece it was and then fly back and can figure it out pretty easily. Anyway, it is really good to be back in the zoo as a whole. And there is a few valid reasons why I've not been working on videos quite as much this year. Unfortunately, real life has certainly been getting in the way for me in 2024. I have tried to update on this in the community posts on the YouTube channel, but if you don't read those, Basically, life has been getting in the way. I do have a day job that pays the bills and I've been working on a particular project since um, I think it was early December. I started that last year. It's been rather intensive work. So by the time I'm done with my day job, I was 
completely exhausted at night and just no time to work on anything fun like Planet Zoo in the evenings. Another quite big change this year, I've been taking more time to look after both my physical and mental health. I know I don't always often act like it but I'm not a young woman anymore and there's certain stuff that you just as you get older you have to take care of yourself and for me that means I have to prioritise exercise, eating right and actually preparing my own meals which in the height of working on YouTube stuff I really wasn't doing that I was going for convenient options and wasn't exercising barely at all I'm glad to say that is completely changed now I'm fitting in exercise every single day I'm eating healthy nutritious meals but unfortunately to fit this all in alongside having the day job, the YouTube stuff does have to take a back seat. There's no way around it. I just, I can't create hours in the day that don't exist. At one point, I would have been working on YouTube videos every night of the week. And that's no joke. I was working every single night of the week, either creating habitats or creating videos, doing the thumbnails. It just took up so much of my time that there wasn't time to do anything else. So really for my own sanity, something did have to change. And happy to say, I feel like I've worked out a schedule that works with life. So instead of every day of the week being a YouTube day, it's more like maybe one, possibly two days in the week. And I also can spend one day a weekend on YouTube stuff. So it's either Saturday or Sunday. I can dedicate a whole day to it. It is still a little too early to say whether that schedule works for me, but I'm pretty confident it should be doable. Ultimately, what that means for the videos is instead of seeing a video every week, it may drop down to one video every two weeks. In the long run, I'll take the hit on views and the algorithm doing its thing for dropping that down to one video every two weeks because it just gives me back that work-life balance and making sure that my health is a priority for me again. I guess in the long run, it is also better for the channel because I won't have the months and months of gaps because I've just got burnout from trying so hard. Hey ho, that's the serious talk out the way and we'll get back to talking about the builds. So little penguins going in here. Something I have noticed coming back into franchise mode after a break for a while. The trade market is pretty messed up at the moment, or at least it feels like it is. The availability of animals feels a lot less than there was before. I have planned ahead and I did purchase all the animals that were missing ahead of time. So they are sitting in my trade center at the moment. And some, I've had to spend a ridiculous amount of credits to purchase them. And on a few occasions, there just wasn't any available. So I had to sit there for hours waiting for availability on animals. So not a fantastic reintroduction to the game there for me. Didn't have any problem finding little penguins though. There was heaps of those available. So I'm assuming that means that they're going to be prolific breeders in the zoo. That's why I have given them a little more room than they need here because there's going to be lots of little penguins about that's going to impact their space availability and it's going to bump that up a little bit. So I have made this enclosure a little bit bigger than they need it to be. Speaking of, I'd say we're ready to take a look around. So here we are, six little tiny, tiny penguins here. One heading straight for the pool there, and I think the others aren't far behind. Let's see, yep, making their way over for the water. Got to say, looking at the size of the penguins and the size of the buildings, maybe I did go a bit too big there with the hard shelter. However, you have to remember that the staff have to be able to get in there because if it's too small and the staff can't get in, they won't clean in there. I've also put some enrichment items in here so that the guests, when they view through that window, can see them playing with the enrichment. Oh yes, and the blocks up here, the barrier was indicating that there was an escape point here, but I couldn't see anything. So I've added blocks as a kind of band-aid for that. Oh, look at that. The penguins are so tiny. Look at the size of them compared to the, the duck enrichment. That's far too big for them. Oh, looks like we're going for a dive. 
Let's have a look how they look under the water. Yeah, not particularly pretty under here. Didn't put an awful lot of effort into the, the pool here. But it is functional and the guests do get a nice view of the underwater bit there. Plenty of space to watch them diving for food and diving off the enrichment platform and stuff. So that's the habitat. In terms of theming, I've tried to make this look a little oceanic here. So guests go through the archway and that brings you out into the underwater viewing area. Only a small one for this, so only a small set of stairs here. Then at ground level, there's a nice big window here to view into the hard shelter as well. So yeah, happy with what I've got here as an introduction to these oceanic animals. Which brings us to new animal time. Let's see what we are going to put in the zoo next. It's the North Island Brown Kiwi. Now this is another really great animal to work with. Really simple to do because they only need a tiny bit of space. And they're a confident species so no hassle with the barriers and stuff like that. Just two kiwis to a habitat so space wise this is going to be a really small enclosure. So I'm going to work on a way to squeeze the kiwis in in this very corner here. Right, so voiceover time and I've been looking back through the footage of what I recorded for creating the kiwi habitats and honestly it's a little dull because I've gone pretty simple with the kiwi habitat for the zoo. I felt like after I'd built for the little penguins I felt like I was more into the flow of creating habitats for zoos again. And I guess I think I kind of created this habitat on autopilot. I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing. I was just enjoying the game for once. Something I've really enjoyed with Planet Zoo since the start is creating little barriers and making things out of the wooden pieces. So going back to basics here, I've created a brand new fence barrier for the kiwis and they're a great species to have a very custom barrier here because being a confident animal they're very okay with the mesh fencing they're not going to create a force or get upset with the guests peering over at them through the mesh also they can't jump over the fence so you can have that really low and they can't escape so really good for that Going with the same theme, I've also created a brand new hard shelter out of the, I think it was the East Asia water wheel wood pieces. Just adds a bit of variety than using the bog standard flexi colour wood piece that I tend to normally use for everything. So here's the kiwis going in and as you can see here, plenty of room but also nicely contained. So very small habitat but certainly enough room for these tiny little birds. I guess one interesting thing with the kiwis is that they love a lot of coverage so they really favour having lots of bushes and trees and stuff that they can wander through which does seem a bit weird considering they're a confident animal. Normally it's the animals that are shy that want a lot of coverage so I did think that was a bit strange but maybe that's what the biomes like in their natural environment just lots of coverage and bushes and stuff maybe it's to do with hiding from predators anyway let's take a look at the finished habitat so this is our very small kiwi enclosure perfect size i guess considering how small the kiwis are themselves interestingly the kiwis like the ant hill enrichment item so i've got that in up front there where guests can see them interacting with it and here is our kiwis. I do think they are quite cute, aren't they? Just the way they waddle along with the little steps there. Very cute. Anyway, so enclosure wise, this is a brand new hard shelter and it's kind of like an oversized hutch for them, this is. And they seem happy with it. So indeed, that is another animal down. Still plenty more to go before we can say that we've got every animal in this zoo again, for which we should probably see what's next. It's yet another very small animal. We've got the quokka. We certainly had a treat today with all these really simple, tiny animal enclosures to make, haven't we? Only need two quokkas in the enclosure and being so small, that again is a very small enclosure that I have to contend with. 
Right, it is a very quick speed build for the quokka here because I decided I was just going to use exactly the same pieces I'd just used for the kiwi for this one. The small enclosure for the quokka fits in perfectly in this tiny little space in the corner here and I figured considering both of the animals, the kiwi and the quokka, are right next to each other and they're very small enclosures, it would look a bit strange if I went for an entirely different approach for this one. So it's the same fencing and the same mesh fencing. What I have done is modify the hard shelter so it fits into the space a little better here. So the quokkas get to enjoy a little overhang here with the hard shelter too. Oh, and something I forgot to mention before, the quokkas do get an interspecies enrichment bonus with the emus, but I did have a look at moving the emus from, I think they're housed with the kangaroos at the moment and moving them would have been a nightmare. So pretty much with these late additions to the zoo, the new DLCs, if they can squeeze in with another animal, then I'm happy to do that. If it's going to create a bit of a headache and there's a clash between what they're already housed with, then it's not worth the effort and they unfortunately have to be on their own. To be honest, I can't see how a quokka's gonna get much enrichment from an emu. I mean, one of them's huge and one of them's tiny, so I imagine the quokka's would just be trying to get out of the emu's way most of the time. Anyway, I'm rambling, so let us take a look at the completed habitat. Here are our quokka's in the zoo. I really have had an easy time of it today. We've had one complex build, I guess you could call the little penguins quite complex because of the underwater viewing area, but the other two have been nicely simple. Nice to see we've finally got some guests have made their way around here. Guest numbers are restricted to help the FPS, so sometimes they struggle to get around to the new areas of the zoo. Love how open and airy the quokka habitat is. I believe quokkas can be a walkthrough exhibit, but we don't do those in this zoo anymore. We tried that once, never again. Look back at one of the Lima episodes if you want to know why. And here we are. Oh, they are so cute. Much, much smaller than I thought they'd be. So again, I might have given them a tad too much room here. Or it's Planet Zoo space requirements again, saying that they need a lot more room than realistically they would need. Hey ho, managed to get them in okay in that corner, so probably would have given them that room anyway. So that's the quokka habitat. I suppose we should, probably should take a look at the pod shelter again. So this is a modified version of the custom shelter I'd made next door for the kiwis. Giving them a porch area to extend it out a little bit because it's a little bit shorter than the hard shelter next door. And, well, I guess I'm a little rusty at the old um, habitat tour here because really don't know what else I can say about the quokkas. They're a cute animal. They've got a nice habitat here. And, well, I guess that is it for today. For everyone that's returned to check out this video, an extra special huge, huge thank you for checking it out. I'm fairly sure the YouTube algorithm is not going to be happy with me for not uploading for so long, so I'm not sure how far reaching this video will get. So yes, a big thank you for checking it out and I will catch you, very much catch you in the next video.